So good morning. This is the Aging with Ease and Grace uh, course for the for seniors week this week. So welcome, ladies. And uh, so I know Linda has had some experience of Feldenkrais, and so has Nu. Uh, I'm not sure whether Tanya has. Uh, so, and I can't connect with her. The sound's not coming on. So we'll just have to do the best we can. Uh, because you do know about Feldenkrais, I was going to go give a little talk about what it was, but um, I won't do that because I don't need to with, uh, with just the two of you here. So we might just um, go straight into the lesson that we're going to do today. So first of all, how are you? How, how are you going, Linda, this, today? I'm well, thank you. You're well. Your back's feeling okay and everything? Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, kind yeah. of walk with a spring in my step. And you, <laughs> yes, uh, Linda did a workshop with me on Saturday uh, called Bones for Life, walking with a spring in your step, and so we had a lot of fun doing that. Yeah. And um, and yeah. Nude, would you like to just put on your sound just so I can hear you for a minute, just to see how you're going? Just yes. Um, yeah. So how how are you this morning? Not, not too bad, thank you. Yeah, you're not in any pain or anything that I need to know about? No. Or? No. No, not well. Uh, uh, my normal back pain and hip. Yes, yeah. But it's not as bad right now. Okay, good. Okay. So I'll get you to come and lie on the floor somewhere where I can see you, like sideways. I'll just, um, I'll share my screen and just show you a picture of what, um, what that might look like. There it is. Um, can you see this little picture here? Just a, a, so I, I need to see you kind of like you're facing kind of parallel to your camera and on the floor back a little bit so that I can see your whole body. But you don't have to lie on your side, just come and lie on your back. Does that make sense to you? No. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. So you want everybody to lie on the floor? Yes. Yeah. Good morning, Patricia. Good morning. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. But I've got to get on the floor. <laughs> yeah, so did you see the little picture that I had? Yes, thank you. Okay, yes. So just find yourself a little way of lying on the floor that way. Have you ever had an experience of Feldenkrais before? No, no. no. Okay, so I'll talk a little bit about it first. Thank you. Yeah. Hello, Rhonda. I can hear you now. Oh, good. That's great. Good, Tanya. Can Have you, you had any experience of the Feldenkrais method? I have. You yes, have. I, I do know what it's about, yes. Okay. Yeah. I've done some. Oh, good. Yeah. yeah. Do you have any pain in your body at all that I should know about? Or? Um, I have a weak, a painful right wrist. Um, ligaments okay. in my left shoulder, so that's, yeah. I can't do some um, movements. Oh, painful right wrist and left shoulder. Okay. Did you have an injury to your shoulder? Or? Oh, I'll, I'll never get it. up. I don't know how. Uh, Patricia, if you, if you want to, you can, have you got a bed or a couch yeah. near you that you could lie on? Patricia? Yeah, I, I did get on the bed. Yeah, that'll be I've okay. Got a weak left leg. The what? I've, I've got a weak left leg. <laughs> Sorry, I could you've got a what? I've just got to get... She said she's got a... I had a clock in my left leg. Okay. Yeah. Just go ahead. Okay. So you could actually sit in a chair if you wanted to. It wouldn't matter. You okay. can still do the lesson like that if it's too difficult to get on the floor, so... Okay. Is this okay like this? Rhonda, I can't, I'm too far away to see myself. Oh, yeah, you're fine. Just, um, if you can come and lie on your back, please, Tanya. And if you've got a little cushion, you can put under your head or something. They're just sort of too... I'll just get one. Yeah, just get yourself a little cushion. Now, Patricia, where are you? Oh, in a chair. In a chair, good. Chair? Okay. Yeah, just stay good. sitting in a chair. That'll be fine. Just... Uh, so you have some pain in your body, do you? In this sort of... I, I had a clot 
and my well, left leg's been left weak. Okay. I've sort of got to take my time to move it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So just take it very gently in this sort of thing. Thank you. Okay. And welcome to the class. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So just um, sense how you're lying on the floor and, and Patricia just sense how you're sitting in the chair. So these lessons that we're going to be doing this week, I've called the course Aging with Ease and Grace. So they're, they're finding ways of, um, I'm just going to close this. Wait a second. I'm just going to mute. Excuse me a minute, I'll just find how to do this. Mute all, okay. So I've just muted you so that I can, um, not, when I'm, I'm going to send you a recording of this and you won't get the interference on the recording then. Okay, so if you want to ask me anything, just put your hand up, like Patricia, if you need to ask me anything or, or if you would get in any pain or Tanya and the others know to do that. So, um, so just um, sensing how you're lying on the floor this morning. So the movements we are doing are very gentle movements, slow movements, and they're meant to be... The movements are meant to be pleasurable. So if you move and you feel pain, stop and do less. So often when people start, they'll do more bigger movements. And, uh, but if it's just, they're like little tiny movements. So if I say, turn your head, it can be just a little tiny bit like that. It doesn't have to be like that, you know, like really big movements. And so what we're doing is, is looking at waking up the brain to help our body move better. So that when I do a movement, if I wanted to reach up to the ceiling, if I just reached up with my arm, I could, I'd strain my neck and shoulders. But if I can reach with my whole body and have all the breaks off, then the movement's easy. So our body's designed to move in a way that everything moves with ease and effort and less effort, with more ease and less effort. So, um, And, and when that happens, we have that ease of movement. And I, I call it grace when we, you know, if you've ever seen people that are graceful when they're moving, when they're dancing or playing sport or just even walking, they've got that ability to move with all of themselves easily and effortlessly. So the main thing is to just move slowly, to move with ease. And what we're developing is, is an awareness of the sensations that are happening in your body so that you start to feel yourself and, and feel places where you may hold tight in your body. And so, um, so just notice how you're lying on the floor this morning, how you're giving your weight to the floor. Sensing how your heels are resting on the floor. Now, if you're uncomfortable with your legs long, by all means, bend up your knees so your feet are flat on the floor. And noticing um, how your buttocks are resting on the floor. Is there, is there is the weight even in your buttocks? And if you're sitting on the chair, noticing is the weight even in, the, in your buttocks on the chair? Noticing what's happening in your lower back. Could an ant crawl under your lower back or an elephant? <laughs> or, and if you're sitting in the chair, what does your lower back feel like? Is it touching the back of the chair? Or are you um, coming off the chair a little bit? And 
Noticing your shoulders on the floor. Does one shoulder feel heavier or lighter on the floor? And feeling how your arms are resting on the floor. And just being aware of your breathing, noticing the length of your in-breath and the length of your out-breath. Learning to move with ease and grace. First, let's slow down the pace. Getting in touch with the feelings within all struggle and effort erase from your face. Yes, you can move with ease. Follow your instincts if you please. How you did move with joy when you were a little girl or boy. Spiraling with such grace that with of effort there was no trace. You knew how to self-assert, how to move without any excess work. Your pelvis could rock and roll. You felt power in your pelvic bowl. Then your neck could be free in any direction for you to see. Now you can move with ease and grace. First, let's slow down the pace. Getting in touch with the feelings within. All struggle and effort erase from your face. So bend up your knees so that your feet are flat on the floor. And if you're sitting in the chair, Patricia, you might like to put even a little support behind your back. You know, like a little cushion behind your back, just to support your back. And just place your hands on the top of your pelvis, like where your waist is. If you, if you put your hands on your waist and you just bring your hands down a little bit, you'll feel two big bones here. They're, the, they're the, called the iliac crest. They're the bones of your pelvis. Just feel those bones. And bring your hands down to where your groin area is and you'll feel a pubic bone, another bone that's down um, where your groin area is. And so this pelvis is, a, is the biggest bone in the body. It has, it's like a bowl. It's the same shape as a bowl. The back of the pelvis is the sacral plate. Don't worry, Patricia, if you can't find anything. Okay. okay. So I want you to imagine that this bowl of your pelvis is filled with water. And Patricia, as you're sitting there, you've got the bowl will be the other way. You have the bowl, you know, the, um, be filled with water as you're, oh, you're lying down now. Okay, good. Yeah, okay. <laughs> well done. <laughs> okay. So as you're lying there, the bowl is filled with water and you're just doing a little movement just to tip the water a little bit towards your waist. Tip the water just a little bit towards your waist and then come back to neutral. And as you tip the water a bit towards your waist, notice what, what moves in your body. So you have your knees bent up, your knees are bent up, so your feet are flat on the floor. And feeling as you rock your pelvis as you um, tilt the water towards your waist what happens to that waist area if you, maybe if you put your hand behind your back and you feel that as you tilt your pelvis towards the floor how the waist the back of how your waist presses down into your hand can you feel that feeling of that and notice as you as you press your hand, as you as the water tilts towards your waist, 
and your waist goes a little bit towards the floor, can you feel anything happening in those ribs, those lower ribs in the back of you? We often don't think of the back of ourselves, but when you're lying here on the floor, we get more of a sense of that, that your lower ribs may start to press a little bit into your hand or press a little bit more into the floor. And if you put your hand on your pubic bone, that's that little bone between your legs, can you feel that as you, as the water tips towards your waist, that your pubic bone comes up a little bit more towards your head in the direction, just a little bit, slightly in the direction of your head. And just let that go. And now I'll just do a little, the opposite movement. This time we're going to tilt the water between your legs. So the water's going to, you're tilting the bowl so the water pours out between your legs. Tilting the bowl so the water pours out between your legs and noticing what that feels like. And what happens to the, to your waist area when you tilt the pelvis, when you tilt, when you tilt the water down in this direction. Can you feel that your waist maybe lifts a little bit off the floor? And if you have your hand on your pubic bone, that your pubic bone could move a little bit away from you. And then rest from that. So we have lots of rests in the Feldenkrais, not because you actually, you know, it's not energetic, strenuous work that you need to rest from, but your brain needs to rest because we're thinking a lot and changing habits and patterns. So now just do a little movement of just gently rocking your pelvis forward and back. Rocking your pelvis forward and back. So that the water's tipping towards your waist and the water's tipping between your legs. The water's tipping towards your waist and the water's tipping between your legs. So there's a few more people just joined in. Welcome, Jeanette and Jean. And uh, we're just doing a little movement of rocking the pelvis forward and back. You're just lying on the floor with your legs bent up. And we talked about having doing the movements really, really slowly, like micro movements. So just if I'm looking at you, I wouldn't even know that you're moving much. And so what we wanted to do is wake up our brain and our thinking about how we move and how we connect different parts to ourselves of ourselves when we do a movement. And in this time when we've been, you know, in the in isolation, we haven't been moving so much. We can sit around and um, be doing not not actually moving our pelvis very much, and we can kind of get our pelvis and kind of like we get stuck in slumping, <laughs> and our pelvis rocks back and doesn't move very much, and our hip joints get really tight. So this is a little movement to. Just bring back that awareness, wake up your body to become aware of um, how you can start moving with all of yourself again so that your movement can be easy and light and free. So now let's come back to doing both of those movements together. You're moving, you're rocking your pelvis so that the water tips towards your waist and you're rocking your pelvis so the water tips between your legs. And just feeling, you may feel as you do that, how your waist comes closer to the floor at one part and your waist goes away from the floor in another part. And you may notice as you do that, that your lower ribs come closer to the floor as the water tips bit towards your waist and your lower ribs lift a little bit off the floor as your pelvis rocks forward and the weight water tips between your legs. And now can you uh, bring your awareness to your tailbone? You know, like we've got that little st um, stubby tailbone from our animal legacy. So could you imagine that piece of rope is tied to that tailbone and you're just pulling the rope up between your legs. So the tailbone points up towards the ceiling a little bit and not pulling it up with a maximum amount, just a tiny bit, just to tilt your pelvis a little bit so that the waist goes towards the floor again. It's like tipping the water towards your waist. So the 
tip of the pelvis tilts up a little bit. And then you let the rope go so the tip of the pelvis points towards the floor. So the tip of the pelvis points up a little bit and the tip of the pelvis points towards the floor. Just a very light, gentle movement. And, and remember we said in the beginning that you're wanting the movement to be pleasurable. How can that movement be pleasurable? So we often try very hard to do things and so in these lessons, it's, it's changing that habit, just going really slowly and easily, especially if you're in pain, doing less. And then if it hurts, doing less again. And if it still hurts, just doing the movements in your imagination. So just gently feeling how you can move from the tailbone, you're tilting your pelvis, so, the, so your pelvis, the uh, tailbone, points up towards the ceiling and then points down towards the floor. And you may start to notice that your spine is starting to move like a chain so that it's not just the pelvis that's moving, but you may feel some movement in your chest and you may even feel something happening in your chin. You might feel at one point the chin nods, goes closer to your chest at one point and further away at another point. And don't worry if you can't feel that yet. It's we're, we're waking up our body and learning how to connect everything again. So just this gentle movement of rocking your pelvis from your tailbone, tilting the tailbone up and tilting the tailbone down and noticing what comes along for the ride. And then resting, letting that movement go. So the secret to moving well, moving with ease and grace, is not adding something to our movements. It's actually letting go of how we've been holding. And it's learning to, sometimes we hold on and we don't even know that we're holding on tight. So it's learning to identify how we do that and to stop doing what we're doing. So let's just do a little movement. I want you to really tighten your belly. Just hold your belly muscles really, really tight and especially down near the lower belly and pull them tight and grit your teeth at the same time. And now do that little movement of rocking your pelvis forward and back. You can either think of the water uh, coming towards your waist or going away, or you could think of your pubic bone or you could think now of your tailbone. And feel what happens when you tighten your belly muscles. Just put your hand up if you notice a difference. You feel like you've got the brakes on a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So in this time, with what's happening with um, COVID and everything, people are, are in survival. We're watching the news to see what's happening and we're thinking, is this going to come up to Brisbane and all these questions happen and we can tighten in our belly when this happens. And then when we tighten in our belly, we can't move our body. So becoming, starting to become aware, is my belly, can I let my belly be free? And in our culture, we have this thing of like having to have a flat belly. I remember in, our, in my generation, when I was young, I had to wear, we wore little corsets you know, to tighten our belly, which didn't do much for letting our pelvis move freely and easily. So just um, now let your belly go. And even could you breathe into your belly? So if you feel, put your hands on your pubic bone again, and as you take a breath in, can you just really let your belly hang out? It's like a baby does. Breathing into your belly as you rock your pelvis forward and let your belly, your round belly, hang out. And then just releasing that, just letting your belly come back, still keeping it soft as you let your pelvis come back. And notice if just breathing into your belly enables your pelvis to move a bit, a bit more freely. So you breathe into your belly, creating space in there, giving yourself room to move. Another thing that happens when we get stressed is that we'll go this, like I call it a heave and gulp breath. We go <gasps> and breathe right up in the top of the chest and hold the belly tight. So let's just try that. Just really do this heave and gulp breath. Breathe up into the top of your chest. <gasps> hold your belly tight and feel what happens if you, rock, if you move your pelvis. Right, just rock your pelvis forward and back. And again, just put your hand up if you notice that that's really difficult <laughs> to do. Yeah, yeah. And let that go and just breathe down into your belly. 
So one of the lovely things you can do to help you move better and more easily is just to put your hands on your lower belly, just lie down. You could even put your feet up on a chair. And if anyone has lower back pain, we often get that from the back muscles being tight all the time. And so putting your feet up on a chair, even putting a little cushion underneath your bottom, uh, and then putting your hands on your belly and just breathing very lightly into your belly will just really help you ease any tension in your back. And it calms your nervous system. One of the beauties, one of the, the great gifts of the Feldenkrais is that it um, calms your nervous system, slows down that, uh, slows, you, slows you down. Instead of racing in our, in our nervous system, we have a, a natural pulse. It's like a, a jellyfish. Have you ever seen those jellyfish in the water where they, they pull themselves along by pulling their fronds together and releasing them and they kind of, so we have this, this action in our own body, they're called ring muscles. So we, as, we, as we're breathing in and out, these muscles open our body out and close our body down. And so they, they're meant to be going at this nice, easy, gentle pace in and out and just like the opening, the allowing and the breathing out, the releasing, letting go. So it's opening, allowing, releasing, letting go. But when we get stressed, we'll go up uh, and tighten hold ourselves really tight. When we're in pain, we do the same thing. We go, oh, hold ourselves really tight. So this gentle movement of opening, closing, um, just allows the nervous system to come back into balance and harmony and allows any tension in the body just to release to their muscles instead of holding really tight, they start to let go. So just breathing like this, putting your hands on your belly is a lovely little movement to do that. So keeping your hands on your belly, breathing into your belly, taking a big breath into your belly and then letting go, letting go with a sigh. Ah. And you're breathing into your belly and then releasing with a sigh. Ah. Letting go. Now, Let's bring your attention now to your feet. Feel your feet on the floor, your heels and your toes on the floor, the soles of your feet on the floor. And you'll notice that there's, a, there's an arch. For most people, there's, a, there's an arch. Some people don't, they have a flat foot. But for most people have a little arch in the foot. And um, so just feel how your feet are resting on the floor. Just put them in some comfortable position. And just do a little movement of pressing your feet into the floor. And notice as you press your feet into the floor, how that is a way of moving your pelvis. So as you press your feet into the floor, it's like the water tipping towards your waist, that you're, you press your feet into the floor and the waist presses more into the floor. And then as you let the pressure go in your feet, that the waist leaves the floor. Just feel that. You're just gently pressing your feet into the floor. And can you notice that as you press your feet into the floor, your toes press down into the floor, your, so your heels press into the floor, the sides of your feet may press into the floor, that the arch can lift a little bit. The arch in the foot can lift a little bit. And then when you let that go, the toes flatten down, they're not pressing into the floor anymore, the heels aren't pressing into the floor. And then when you press the feet into the floor again, the arch just lifts a little bit. So these ring muscles that I talked about before start in the feet. These are, these are muscles that propel us along in space. So they propel a jellyfish along in the water. And when we're walking, they propel us along in space. And a funny thing's happening, I've noticed with people at this, my clients and myself at this time, when we're feeling we're not sure is the, is the ground um, stable, supportive underneath us? You know, what's going to happen in our world? Can I, you know, is it safe to put my foot down? <laughs> is it safe to go anywhere? So we kind of get out of our feet, sort of, and we're not grounded. We're up in our head worrying about everything. So one way when you find yourself worrying about everything is just to come back down into your feet, feel your feet, and just do that little movement of pressing your feet down into the floor. It's called grounding yourself, pressing your feet down and feeling how that movement supports your body, you know, like the pelvis starts to move. 
And then as you breathe in again and you let go, you open up to receive some light and guidance in your life rather than what's on the news taking you into, into fear. So you're opening up just like a tree in the morning that opens its, or a, a flower opens its um, petals to receive the sunlight. So as you breathe in, you can open up to receive the light, the sunlight and the love. And as you breathe out, you can feel that support through your feet, the support from Mother Earth, just like a plant is nourished and nurtured from the earth, you're feeling that support. And you could even blow out the breath like a candle going, or like you're kissing, blowing out the candle. So we have these ring muscles in our mouth as well. So you take a breath in, opening up and breathing out gently pressing through your feet and then you could even let out a little sound with that so you're breathing in and you're breathing out with a little sound Ooh. so sometimes our feelings get locked up inside of us we're watching the news and we're going round and round we're thinking about our family our friends and who's safe and who isn't and we hold all the feelings in hold our breath and lock everything inside it gets all bottled up inside and so this little gentle movement of breathing, taking a breath in, blowing out the candle, letting the breath, ooh, letting the sound out. Imagine it just releasing all your worries and cares. Taking a breath in, breathing in, and then breathing out. Ooh. So again, just starting to notice as you're pressing your feet into the floor, how that connects up through your body. How does that resonate through your body? You may feel that as you press your feet into the floor, your pelvis starts to rock back. So the waist comes towards the floor. Notice if anything happens in your chest and notice if anything happens in your chin. And just rest from that. You can let your legs come long or you can leave your leg, knees bent up, whichever is more comfortable for you. And so what we're doing is developing an ability to start to feel ourselves. Sometimes we can be like, I, I know my mother used to um, really grit her, you know, like clench her hand together and she'd even hold, like getting me to walk across the street with her, she'd be nervous and she'd be worried that I'd get, you know, fall over on the road or something. And so she, or the car would knock me over. So she'd grab me really, really tightly. And she didn't even know she was doing it. And then kind of we copied our parents and what they do. And whenever I get stressed, I notice I'm doing the same thing. And I'm not even realizing it. And sometimes my hand just really starts to ache. And then I'll suddenly realize, oh my God, I've just been holding myself really, really tightly. And so we have these habits where we're holding on so tightly and we don't even realize it until it gets so painful that we can't bear it. And then it's like our body screams at us. So it's starting to notice uh, in these classes, uh, how can I find more comfort? How can I find more ease? And we start to train our brain so that we, when we go out into life and we get upset by something, can we, and we start to notice, oh, I'm doing this. Can I do this? Can I breathe? Can I create more space inside? Okay, bend up your knees once again. And let's bring your attention now to your head. So if you've got a big pillow underneath your head, you may need to move it just to do this little movement. Let's see how you go. Can you do a little movement of looking behind you so your head tilts back, so your chin comes away from your chest? And if you put your hand behind your neck, you'd feel that that space gets shorter. You know, it's like your neck arches there. So you're tilting your head back and feeling how your neck arches and as you do that can you just poke out your tongue just go ah. poke out your tongue 
So I've lost your picture, Patricia. I don't know. Uh, and just a slow movement, uh, feeling how your back of your neck gets um, scrunches up and the front opens out. Now, I want you to do this movement, like really grit your teeth really tightly. Mm, if you're really angry with somebody or upset at something, you're really gritting your teeth. And now do that same movement. See what it's like to try and tilt your head back when your jaw is really, really tight. It feels like you've got the brakes on. And it's harder to do the movements. So many of us, are, are, we're walking along with the brakes on all the time. <laughs> And we're trying to, you know, we're trying, we then, then use our willpower to make ourselves do something. So even though our jaw is really tight, we're going to do it anyway. So in the Felder Christ, we learn how to um, stop doing what we're doing. <laughs> and now I'll just let your jaw be free and do that same movement. Uh, uh, uh. And once more, tighten your jaw, like you're really angry, think of something that makes you angry or upset, which is pretty easy these days. And then try and do that same movement and feel how your neck kind of gets stuck. And then let your jaw go. Ah. Ah. So I had a, um, a whiplash injury when I was 21, I got hit by a truck and learned to do this to my neck to protect myself. That was another thing that happens. We have injuries and accidents and we tighten ourselves. So I learned to just tighten my neck like this and learning to do this movement was such a revelation. I used to get these terrible headaches and I could never work out why until I started learning Feldenkrais that I was actually doing things to hold myself, to protect myself that were causing me pain. <laughs> and as I learned what I was doing, and, and that I could do something different that, and that I was safe to do this movement and, and that I could do it with ease and pleasure and not cause myself pain, that, that tension started to release. And another thing that happens when we're in pain, we'll tighten our jaw. It's a really place that, that we really, you know, just tighten really strongly when, when, we, uh, when we're in pain. Okay, so now with this soft jaw, can you do these movements of your pelvis again, just rocking your pelvis forward and back? So thinking of whatever way you like. Uh, you can just think of the, you know, the water moving back and forth. You can think of your legs, your feet pushing you, pushing, and you can think of the tailbone, whatever you like, or you could think of all of those together. Rocking your pelvis forward and back, letting your jaw be soft and see what happens as you do the movement with a soft jaw. And then keep doing the movement, but tighten your jaw. Really grit your teeth and tighten your jaw. And feel what happens if you try and move your pelvis with your jaw tight. Can you notice the effort yeah, involved in that and even pain? So uh, when we find something, an effort, and I think as we get older, you know, you see people walking along, really struggling walking. It's because parts are tight and they don't know it. They've had these habits all their lives and uh, walking along and um, with a lot of effort because the, the brakes are on everywhere. It's like you're driving the car with the handbrake on. And it's just simply, we think, oh my God, I'm getting old, my joints are getting stiff, and what can I do? Nothing, but we can. We can start to unravel this holding patterns and learn to move with ease and grace again. One of my trainers, I looked at a video with her this morning, she's 90, a bit more than 90 now, and she's, and she, She's still teaching. <laughs> She's teaching people Feldenkrais classes. And, and uh, I, I met her when 20 years ago when she was my age and uh, just was totally amazed at how, how easily she moved. And she carried these big suitcases and um, you know, it was a little tiny, up to my shoulders, little tiny lady. But she learned to use herself well and um, didn't buy into the idea that because she was getting older that she that she would uh, move less and and move with and be stiff when she moved or in pain when she moved 
And uh, so I aspire to be, if I reach the age of 90, <laughs> to be like her. Um, so no matter what I, our age is, it's never too late to grow your brain. It's never too late to change, which reminds me of another little song. Um, it's never too late to grow your brain. You don't have to live in so much pain. No, it's never too late to grow your brain. Grow your brain, grow your brain, grow your brain. You know you can learn to change your mind. You really can leave your past behind. No, it's never too late to change your mind. Change your mind, change your mind, change your mind. Coax your brain cells into action. You will get such satisfaction doing movements which give you pleasure. Move and groove at your leisure. La 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 la. Of course, you can learn to light your spark. You don't have to stay there in the dark. No, it's never too late to light your spark. Light your spark, light your spark, light your spark. Of course you can learn to move anew. It all depends on your point of view. No, it's never too late to learn to move anew. Move anew, move anew, move anew. So just sensing how you're giving your weight to the floor now, noticing the parts that are touching and has anything changed since you started these movements. So our body is, has a, a particular mathematical design. Um, have you ever seen a spiral patterns in nature? They're everywhere. You can see the galaxy spiral, plant spiral. We're meant to move in a spiral pattern. We have a, um, there's a man called Fibonacci. He, who um, developed the mathematical formula of the spiral and our bodies are designed this way. And if we can uh, remember about this spiral pattern, it's like we listen to a song that we know, like if I said, twinkle, twinkle, little star, you'd know the next, the rest bit of it, how I wonder what you are. So you could, um, it's like a body remembers. So if we, can replicate these spiral patterns in the body, the body will start to remember how it's designed to move. Now, the spiral patterns, I've broken them down into three planes of action. Flexion extension, which is the forward and backward movement that we're doing today. And rotation, which is a turning movement when I turn and look around myself. And sideways movements which we don't really do very much in our culture. And I found over the many, I've been a practitioner for 30 years or so now, that if I can help people wake up their bodies to be able to move with all of themselves in the flexion extension, in rotation and lateral flexion, that frees their body to move in a spiral and to walk well. Like our walking is actually a spiral pattern. So this week, what I'm doing in each, each day is to look at those different planes of action. Today we looked at flexion extension. Tomorrow we'll look at rotation. Wednesday we'll look at um, the lateral flexion. Thursday we'll put them together. And Friday we'll do things with the breathing, putting that together. Okay, so let's um, bend up your knees once again. There's one other part of the body that we're going to be looking at and that's the chest area. So if you put your hands over your chest, like you're hugging yourself, just hugging yourself. And this is going to do a little movement of taking, of lifting up your shoulders and taking your elbows down towards your waist, lifting your shoulders so your, your arms are staying on your shoulders like this and you're kind of like hugging yourself and bringing your shoulders down. So if you can see me, I'll, I'll just make myself bigger. So if you can see. I'm just doing a little movement like this. So I'm folding myself in the front, folding myself in the front. And can you just do that just even less and just leave your head on the floor so you don't actually have to lift your leg up, your head up. But, and notice what, if um, to do that, if you try and keep your chin close to your chest, you'll, you'll, you won't be able to, do this movement 
without lifting your head. But if you can let your chin go away from the chest, like you were saying, ah, before, ah, you'll find that your chin, your, um, your shoulders will lift and you may feel that the back of your ribs, the lower ribs are pressing more into the floor. Here in the middle of your chest, you've got a breast bone, which is a big bone that um, protects the lungs and the heart. And it can become like an armor plate. Have you ever seen people, you know, somebody asks what's wrong with you and you say nothing and they stiffen their chest and hold themselves really rigidly. Or sometimes we just collapse, something's happening and we're really upset and we just collapse. And, yeah. So just feeling this little movement and just rest from that. Just let that go. And bend up your knees once again and just do this little movement of rocking your pelvis forward and back again. Just gently rocking your pelvis forward and back. And as you rock your pelvis forward and back, can you feel it? Just notice what's happening in your chest. And can you think of your chest just softening? And that as you, as you um, take your waist towards the floor and the water comes towards the floor, your lower back comes towards the floor. Could you feel that sense that your shoulders could slightly lift a little bit, like you're hugging yourself? Now, what I want you to do now is really tighten your chest as if you're really angry with somebody or upset and you're just gonna tighten those, that chest and not let it move at all. And feel what happens if you do this movement, not letting your chest move. That kind of stops. Or if you do it, you kind of push through and that jars in your head. And just let that go and rest. Bend up your knees again. And one last time, can you come to just doing that little movement of your pelvis, rocking your pelvis forward and back. Rocking your pelvis forward and back and feeling. And can you feel that your spine can move more like a chain, have that little domino effect through your spine? And that it connects up to your neck and that you may feel that as you arch your back, the chin comes a little bit closer to the chest and as you round your back, your chin goes a little bit away. And then you may like to do a little, like a, if you've seen, they don't have them so much these days, but I remember as a kid, my mother used to make jellies and they take them out of the mound, they'd be just jelly on a plate. And if you took the plate and you wobbled it, the jelly would kind of rock back and forth. Could you imagine that you're a jelly on a plate and you're just moving your feet as if you're kind of rocking like a jelly on a plate, just letting, so it's a, it's, it's a less rather than more movement, just a little gentle jiggling, I call it a gentle jiggling movement. And you can make a little sound, ah, 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 You know, little kids do that. You hear them soothing themselves by making this ah, 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 ah movement. And just rest from that. And sense how you're lying on the floor now. And is there any difference from when you started? Notice your breathing. And very gently, wanting to keep this same feeling that you have on the floor just very slowly roll to your side and come up to sitting. And remember that sense of how can I do this easy, easily and pleasurably. And sensing what it's like to be sitting. And 
if it's uncomfortable for you to sit on the floor, you can sit on a chair or sit on a cushion underneath your bottom. You okay there, Tanya? Is anything feeling? Yeah. So you might want to put a little cushion under your bottom. Would that be better for you? Just sort of, yeah. So a little movement. Um, and if you're happy sitting in a chair, that would be fine too, because I think that's where we're mostly sitting. If we could do these little movements that we were doing on the floor in a chair, or even you know, if, you, if that's where you sit, or if you sit on the floor, just so that you, if you want to get a chair to sit on Tanya, that'd be, might be better for you. And Patricia, I can't see you. You were sitting on a chair? Yeah, just come and sit on a chair, yeah. So um, just as you're sitting there on the chair, just notice those bones that you're sitting on. And what happens with many of us when we sit on the chair, we'll slump back in the chair. So just do yourself a good slump, just kind of like slump back in your chair to start with and feel what that's like and feel that when you sit like this, um, it feels fine for a little while, but after a while you start to, you can't breathe properly and you start to get, um, you know, your shoulders are hung, hanging on, they're not getting supported and get pain in your neck sometimes, the neck's doing this, we're sitting at the computer going like that. So can you come forward on your chair, to the front of the chair, and feel your sit bones, those little bones, they're like little rocking chairs, they're called ischiums or sit bones, just feel those little bones. And uh, imagine that bowl of water in your belly. The bowl of water now is um, in a different way, different plane. And that you're tilting your pelvis so the water tips back towards your waist. In other words, the back of your waist goes towards the back of the chair. And you're tilting the pelvis so the water tips out between your legs. You feel that feeling. And can you put your hands on top of those iliac crests, these bones here, and rock your pelvis forward and back. And you can feel how, as you, it's the same movement. But the, 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 the iliac crest rock forward and they rock back. And then can you put your hands on your pubic bone and do that same movement, rocking your pelvis forward and back. So your pubic bone comes towards the floor and your pubic bone comes towards your head. And can you put your hands on your lower belly and just breathe into your lower belly? And with your hands down there on the groin, you may be able to feel that as you as you arch your back, that it's like um, if there were little eyes there, they'd be closing, like the, your belly would press down onto your legs, and then as you rock back, your belly comes away from your legs. Your belly comes forward onto your legs, and your belly comes away. So it's not by going like this; it's just the arching of your back and flattening, feeling that movement. So during your day, when you're sitting around, <laughs> you may just do these little movements. Remember this bowl of water and that you could just gently do these little movements of your pelvis. Your pelvis could rock and roll. You've felt power in your pelvic bowl. And so you can do these. And so that's what we do on the floor. We want to take into our lives. And do I notice myself sitting like this or like this or like this? And I'm getting pain in my body. Can I just come and remind myself of this little pelvic rock that I can just do this little movement, find ease in myself. Now come up to standing and just notice how you're standing. And sensing the weight in your feet. And can you do that little pelvic rock in standing? That the water tips out between towards the front and goes towards the back. And then keeping your hands on your iliac crest, can you just go for a little walk and just feel how those bones move as you how the how your pelvis moves as you're walking? Can you feel that sense that the pelvis actually rocks? It has that ability to rock and to arch and flatten and as you're walking. 
Okay, let's come and have a seat again and we'll just, I'll, I'll unmute you and we'll just have a little brief, um, let you have an opportunity to 